Welcome back to Japan. This is the second vlog in a series of what will be three vlogs. So if you didn't see the first one of us going around Akihabara and Nakano, you can watch that first. We bought so many Nintendo Switch games. Today, we're headed to Shibuya, where Nintendo has their official Nintendo Tokyo store. When I went to Japan in 2019, this store hadn't been built yet. I know the last vlog was just all buying Switch games, but today we want to see some more of Japan's culture before we get to Nintendo Store, which is video games. <laughs> Yeah, we just got a regular old boring hotel. It doesn't have a nice view or anything. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, it does. It's been two very exciting days so far. First day was all Akihabara. Yesterday was Nakano. And I bought some games, but it was mostly about the fun things that we saw. I think Kim got a lot, especially in Bic Camera. Well, yeah, that, but also the Gachapon machines. That was like one of my main things that I wanted to do while we were here. Kim and I are gonna go get breakfast right now. And then I think today is Shibuya. <laughs> Make that a cool transition or something, yeah. I don't know. No, don't just leave it exactly. <laughs> don't just leave it like that. Don't listen to Kim. Leave it like no. That. We all know that Japan has great food, but do you know who else has incredible chef prepared, dietitian approved meals delivered straight to your doorstep? The Factor. I brought this in my suitcase. Factor is sponsoring today's video, and I'm also using Factor to get healthy and fit again. Each of these calorie smart meals are around 500 calories. This looks incredible, and I am dying to eat it. I just microwaved it in two minutes. It's roasted garlic chicken, my guy. It's only 370 calories, and I think this is the best smelling Factor meal I have ever cooked. I mean, I didn't cook it. So if you're also too busy to cook this full, but you want to stay on track, with your goals, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and chopping, prepping, cleaning, bleh, and get the nutritional quality flavor packed food that you need and deserve. Factor has over 35 weekly fresh, never frozen meals, all ready to eat in two minutes. They have new full flavors like cranberry pecan chicken, apple Dijon pork chops, as well as my calorie smart. They also offer keto, chef's choice, vegan, and veggie options. There's something for everybody. They also have these delicious fresh pressed juices. Why don't you click the link below or head to factor75.com and use code beatemups50 to get 50% off your first factor box. We're headed to the Tsukiji Fish Market. It was the world's largest wholesale fish and seafood market in the world until 2018. Yeah, now I don't really like fish or seafood in general, but this market has so much more than that, specifically snacks and meat. There's a lot of great meat that comes out of Japan, but one that you've probably heard of is Wagyu. Wagyu beef comes exclusively from Japan. It's an exceptional quality meat, and it comes from the highest, most meticulous forms of cattle raising. These meat lollipops may be about $30 a pop, but it's one of those things you have to try while you're there, and it is so good. For what it costs in America, this is great. You agree? The vibe of this fish market is fun. It reminds me of Pike Place in Seattle, where when someone orders a fish, they all yell at each other and start throwing fish around. Hey, you think we Ayo! Ayo! Oh, that's a nice sound. <laughs> Come by. Come by. Ah. Nice. <laughs> Which one did you get? Caramel and soda. What's soda? Is it like ramen soda? We're about to find out. Okay, that's kind of crazy. There's like a caramel swirl in the soft soap. It tastes like big red. Big red? It's cinnamon? No, 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 no. Not the gum. The soda. Oh. Like bubble gum kind tastes of? Like blue. <laughs> tastes like blue. Blue. This is my favorite thing that I found so far. <laughs> it's pork. It's fluffy. It's like a cloud. <laughs> I mean, oh, he makes this like 
There's a little bit of love in there. Yeah. If you've had one, you know. If you haven't, you can't even understand how good it is. I tried making dango once from my Monster Hunter review. And it ended up being just pure flour. Hmm. It just was disgusting. I didn't do a good job. <laughs> Okay. okay, okay, but enough fish. Let's get to the good stuff. Pancakes. It's finally, finally happening! This is Flippers. World famous pancake place. I had never heard of or seen this before we were here. And then suddenly everyone was like, you haven't heard of Flippers? But their pancakes are these giant, wobbly, delicious. I mean, it's its own thing. It's kind of like calling a crepe a thin pancake. It's a crepe. I feel like these big fluffy pancakes need their own name as well. Okay, okay. The Nintendo store. We walked across the road, we went up an escalator, and it was like the stairway to heaven. The first thing that drew my eye were these four collectible statues. Like, what is that? These are not amiibo, these are like their own little statues. But I have to buy it. But I have to buy it. I'm actually watching the footage back now, and it was literally about a 20 second span of me going up that escalator to having this link in my hand, and yeah, I bought it. It is so cool. Really heavy and quality. It's way better than an amiibo and about three times the size. This is so hecking cool. I don't know what this is or how this exists. There's Splatoon, Animal Crossing, Mario. They have giant versions of these statues in four different corners of the Nintendo Tokyo store. There's a Mario section, a Splatoon section. Animal Crossing and Zelda. And around each of the statue is a ton of merch and things that you can buy for that IP. And there was a lot of stuff that I hadn't seen before. I was in awe of just how large the store was, how many people were in there, and how much stuff they had. The Animal Crossing selection was really cute. They had a really nice thermos and pot, and even Rooster's coffee grinder. But of course, Bob got it. He's the coffee guy. They had so much Kirby stuff in here too. There's a Splatoon skateboard here. Kind of I wish I'd bought that skateboard. No, there's nowhere I- What am I gonna do? Skate home? So it is cool to see all of the Nintendo Switches out on display here, as well as all of the Joy-Con colors. It's really awesome seeing them together, and it makes me want to build a monument in my house. Now, obviously, there's a ton of video games here, too. It's mostly the first-party games. It's all full price and pretty generic titles. I gotta be honest, there is so much cool stuff in this store, but there's nothing I really needed other than the link. I noticed tucked behind a corner, a gotcha machine, NES and Famicom controller part. It's making the Mario coin sound when I put them oh. in. What'd you get? I got the D-pad. Oh, <laughs> just, cool. just the D-pad. My least wanted thing out of all of it though. I guess in a way they're like fidget toys. The buttons all feel exactly like the actual counterparts. So it's fun just to press them like you're playing a game. These were $6 a pop and I just wanted the buttons and I kept going and going and going. No whammies. Oh. Yo! Easily one of the coolest gotcha machines I've seen though. This whole floor that the Nintendo store is on is great because there's the Nintendo store, there's a Capcom store, there's a Shonen Jump store that was very one piece out because One Piece is very popular right now it seems, and a Pokemon Center. Right now we're in the Pokemon Center. It is so insanely busy and I am way too tired to actually buy anything and stand in these lines, but there's a lot of cool stuff here. This one had a giant Mewtwo in his chamber. So many plushies of Pokemon. I'm partial to him. There was even a design your own shirt. So I thought that was really unique. At this point, it's actually been a very long day. We spent forever at the fish market. So we decided to explore Shibuya a little bit more. Found this cool charcoal coffee place. And we got like a cookies and cream coffee with charcoal. And it was actually surprisingly good. But then we went home and went to bed. So I guess the coffee didn't work. Apparently, 
apparently the place next to the hotel we're staying in also does these pancakes and they were just as good the second time I'm in love and I have a new staple breakfast. After breakfast, we head to a vintage market in Shito Kitazawa, which was supposed to have a couple of video game stores and they didn't. But I will say we had a ton of fun there. After exploring here for a while, we want to go to lunch somewhere that I suggested. So we're at the Rain on the Roof Cafe, which is the cafe that the Persona 5 Curry and Coffee Cafe is based on. In fact, this whole area is based on where Joker lived. So it's a lot of tight alleyways with cool shops and convenience stores. And this was something I really wanted to do. So I'm happy I'm here. Hopefully they have a table for six. It's essentially in the exact same location as its video game counterpart. The vibes are the same. The location's the same. It's just the inside looks different. Everyone really loved the vibe of the place. As soon as I sat down, it really felt like somewhere that you would invite your friends to, to get lunch and coffee. And you would just chat for an hour. I'm really glad we stayed because the coffee was phenomenal. Everyone loved their food. I adored the curry that I had. Totemo oishi means very tasty. It's also what I said to them on the way out. I practiced a little bit of Japanese and she looked very confused that I was speaking Japanese for a second and then looked very happy that I said it was tasty. If I can get sentimental for a moment, being here with Kim and all my friends, it was nice to sit somewhere a little off the tourist trap track. So it was nice to actually experience something less touristy. This might have been my favorite moment from the trip. When we left this place, I walked around the streets for a while. I just wanted to see what else kind of looked familiar, what I could see. I might have been imagining it, but it felt like I was walking around the streets in Persona 5 in this area. I forgot to look for the doctor, my bad, but everything else just seemed familiar. Little convenience stores, a little plant shop. Persona 5 is amazing and play it, please. Pokemon Go is something that Kim and I get very excited to do when we come to Japan because the scene in America is pretty dead. But we played Pokemon Go this whole trip. You know how I mentioned that we're staying in Shinjuku so we can go out into Shinjuku at night and just play all of the arcade games because that's a big thing in Shinjuku? Yeah, we've been jet lagged and tired so we haven't managed to make it out until tonight. It is a 10 minute walk to the nearest arcade and we head straight there. There's a lot of things I think of when I think of Japan. Claw machines and gacha machines are one of them. When I think about claw machines, I usually think of about a scam because they never actually work and it's so frustrating. They just kind of limp wrist, don't actually even pick anything up. In Japan, if you put enough money in and you don't get the thing and you're failing, you can just sen someone, which means, hey, excuse me, can you give me a hand? And people working there will actually move the thing for you and make it easier for you to finally get it, which is so nice. So of course, I'm always drawn to Dragon Quest and here they have squishy slimes. These were so easy to get. I got two back to back. It's so fun. If you get enough stuff too, you can get a shopping bag and carry all your winnings around. Oh yeah, yeah, you can tell I'm a Dragon Quest guy. You know how in my last Japan vlogs, I got the Dragon Quest slime controller for Switch? This is a mouse. I need this so bad. Sadly, it's one of the claw machines where there's a little tab stuck to the box and you gotta try and hook it and drag it over. I wasn't really willing to invest time or money into it. This whole trip, Kim and I have been going into arcades trying to find the Mario Party Arcade that we found on our last trip. We have a whole video about it on the channel if you want to check it out, but it's the most fun arcade machine we've ever played. We couldn't find that on this trip, but we found a really big Dragon Quest machine. We tried to get a seat and people weren't moving. I really wanted to win some of these little Dragon Quest toys, but again, we just couldn't get on the machine. Shinjuku is easily one of the coolest places. It's like Times Square times 10. There are so many places to eat, so many arcades, so many things to do and see. There's a lady in the window over there. And a giant Godzilla up there. This place is so cool. So much to see and do. Like, oh, I don't know. You can get your 45th brown sugar boba of the trip. This one was awesome. We actually went to a lot of arcades this night. I don't have the footage of it. I don't know what happened. To be fair, it was a lot more of just crane games and gotcha machines. I wish I could show you, but it lives up here, I guess. 
You know what's so random? The night before, Bob says, Hey, you know how we went to the Rain on the Roof Persona restaurant today? Did you know that the lobby of this hotel is the buffet from Persona? I didn't get much footage of it, but Kim and I went and had breakfast in the buffet from Persona 5. Today, we are headed to Kyoto. I had never taken the bullet train before, but you hear about it a lot. I didn't really know what to expect. I thought it'd be in the shape of an actual bullet and it would go faster than the speed of light. It's just a cool looking train that goes pretty fast. As much as I love the city of Tokyo, I love the idea of Japan as a whole. What I'm excited for is to go on a trip to Japan one day and not go to a massive city and just explore the countryside of Japan, the rural areas. And even though we're going from one big city to another big city, on the way, I'm gonna get to see so much of countryside Japan. One other thing I'll add is I was kind of anxious of catching the bullet train. I thought it would go so fast, it would freak me out. But it didn't feel fast. It was so relaxing, actually, that I ended up falling asleep halfway through. We get to Kyoto, we Uber to the Nintendo Hotel. The Nintendo Hotel is the Marufukuru Hotel. The building itself was the original Nintendo headquarters, back when they used to make playing cards. It has been completely renovated by a famous Japanese architect as well. As you walk into the building, on the left and right side are these big plates, one in Japanese and one in English, for the Nintendo headquarters. You can also buy little keychain versions of that. Immediately as we walk in into the hotel, there's a little waiting room area. So right now we're in like the lobby area of the hotel. It's like a little sitting room, but there's a lot of cool stuff just in here. So over here, there's a Lego set. The Lego set is of the four buildings that we're standing in. There are so many cool things happening here right now. <laughs> it's tough to take it all in. Probably should have done this tour before Kim and I lived in the room for a couple of days. This is the CEO suite in the Nintendo Hotel or the Marufukuru Hotel, which always sounds like I'm swearing at you. This was just a big office, but it's been renovated into a bedroom suite. I like these big double doors here leading into the bedroom. A really fancy shower with like three showers in there. It's just a nice place to stay. So I have to be quiet because it's really early in the morning. Right here is the old service elevator where they would send down their stock. It doesn't work anymore, but it looks really cool. This is the electrical outlet for that elevator. They've kept it intact and put it behind a glass case, including up there, they have the old water heater unit behind a glass case. There's a lot of history in this room. They also have this whole library dedicated to Nintendo. There's so much to look at up here. There's a book on Nintendo's history with toys. There's also a dilapidated, rusted Nintendo Switch. They have pristine consoles up here, like a GameCube and an N64 in the best condition I've ever seen, as well as a glass Game Boy. Nintendo's old playing cards rotating between the designs. As soon as we walked in this room, I knew what we had to do. Can we do the podcast in here? Because that's insane. You're asking. Bob and I have a podcast called the Nintendo Podcast, and we always knew we were going to do some episodes in our CEO hotel room suites. As I saw this library, plans changed. I knew we had to do the episode in here. So there's actually a whole episode up already of us sat in the old Nintendo headquarters talking about Nintendo and our trip to Japan. As Bob put it on our podcast, it's like we've gone to Mecca. Because it really is where it all started. When I was born, there was an NES in my house and I grew up playing that NES. But it's what got me into video games. Nintendo is all I knew for a long time. Growing up in Australia, didn't have any fancy gaming magazines. I didn't have access to the internet. When I grew up, I wanted a Super Nintendo. I wanted an N64. I wanted a GameCube. I wanted a Wii. Nintendo is all I ever knew when it came to playing video games. It's what drove me to the passion of being a gamer and then eventually a YouTuber and then having this whole channel and visiting Japan. It's all been because of what happened in this building all those years ago. Also, the actual Nintendo headquarters in Japan is just down the road from this hotel. They didn't move that far. All up, staying here was a great experience. Everybody at the hotel was so nice to us. They were so excited that we were filming everything. They wanted to know so much about what we were doing and they were into it. They were like, yeah, film more, which was so unlike what I expected from something that had Nintendo in the name. I don't know if the people working at the hotel will ever watch this, but thank you so much for being so nice. It was a really unique and interesting experience.
Thank you so much for watching this part of the vlog of me and Kim and all my friends in Japan. I hope you enjoyed everything that I showed you. It's honestly exhausting filming everything and being out there in the heat, dragging a backpack and a camera and all my equipment around to vlog everything. But it's so worth it to get to share it with all of you so that you can experience it too. Also, so I can go back and watch it later. Oh, like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you want to see the next episode. You gotta subscribe for that. Yeah, ne. Mata Probably saying that wrong still.